Good morning and welcome to our Memorial Day celebration for 2018. In 1861, the city of Ontario, California was formed, and one year later they created the Bellevue Memorial Park, where we are today. For 126 years, Bellevue has been big enough to help and small enough to care. Dave Hepburn, the Bellevue General Manager, welcomes all of the city and its dignitaries to a special celebration today of those who personally ensured our freedoms in the United States of America. Today, we will see Ontario's best celebrating some of our nation's bravest. Representatives of the Ontario Chafee Show Band under Dr. Gabe Petricelli will play. The Ontario Police Department and the VFW will coordinate some stirring presentations. And you are invited to stay with us for the hour for our Memorial Day celebration 2018. First, Dr. Gabe Petrocelli and the Ontario Chafee Community Show Band.
thank you very much. You did Pet Kelly and the Ontario Chafee Community Show Band. Every year they just do a wonderful job and so they helped get us started today. Thank you all for being here. This is the, I don't know how many years, 30 plus years of the Memorial Day Remembrance here at Bellevue Memorial Park. And we're so proud to do this every year for everybody. My name is Dave Hepburn, I'm the general manager and it's a real honor to uh, be the MC for today. We have a few guests, several guests that we'd like to introduce and some, uh, I've got to make sure I'm, am I okay with the mic? <laughs> so, um, I wanted to just start off by thanking uh, my wife, Bobby, who's here, a lot of you know her. She's been helping out with the VIP parking and a few other things today. Uh, I wanted to thank our whole crew and staff that's here. Roy and his guys were here at 5.30 this morning to do the final touches, uh, touch-ups on everything. And we couldn't have done it without our own uh, crew. Then I want to thank the uh, new addition this year, the uh, Boy Scouts from the area here, Chris Campos and his whole group. And they're going to be helping in the presentation of colors and their, their other flags, and they're also help with parking out in front and other things. They're doing a great job. So our first year having the Boy Scouts participate in this program. They also were here a couple days ago putting out all these beautiful flags and crosses. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I also wanted to um, in your in your brochure that or your little um, program, you'll see that we have uh, lots of people to uh, thank for uh, helping put this on. And I I would be remiss if I didn't thank my own board of directors first here. <laughs> I've got Renee Bionis here and his wife Barb. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Renee. Couldn't do it without you. Um, we have Jim Milheiser, who's on our board. He's our treasurer, and he's also the city treasurer of Ontario. And we have here uh, James Frost, who's a new member of our board of directors, and his wife. Thank you very much. I'd like to now introduce some uh, important VIPs. That's what you saw our little parking area down there. And by the way, let me tell you about that. The, re the reason that we Put the parking way down there so if you want to leave you can leave and get out quick <laughs> but I do, I do appreciate you uh, coming here okay so we have uh, congresswoman norma torres here norma. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we also have uh, former congressman joe Bacchus here yeah. From the city, we have the mayor, uh, Paul Leon, Paul. And we have um, Al Watner, Congress, uh, city councilman. There he is. <laughs> and we have Jim Bowman, city councilman. Thank you. And we have uh, Ruben Valencia. A new, a new city councilman. Thank you. Um, we also have from the city, the city um, manager is Scott Ochoa. Scott. Thank you. Um, and I think we also have Freddie Rodriguez here in the audience. Some places. Where's Freddie here? Oh, well, there he is. Ready? There's Freddie down that way. <laughs> Thank you for being here so much. And I'm also, I'm also very proud to announce that we have our new police chief is with us, Derek Williams. Yeah. Uh, and uh, his um, uh, police officers and honor guard will be doing some fantastic uh, presentations for you today. Thank you very much for being here. And he also has a special award that he'll be giving out later in the program. Uh, we also have the fire chief, Rob Elwell. Rob, there he is, Rob. Thank you, and your wife for being here. And, hmm? oh, Lo 
Gold Star. Are you here someplace? <laughs> Where is it? Lowell's on our board, and I didn't know he was over there. I apologize for that. Okay. All right, let's uh, move on. I want to make one adjustment in the agenda because of the possibility of the horse getting spooked with this crowd and so forth. The uh, Sergeant Scott Kopab, who's not listed on the agenda, asked if we could move up the riderless uh, horse ceremony, which will be coming right after the presentation of all of the uh, different branches of the military. So at this point, I want to move ahead here with the posting of the colors, please. Posting of the colors. like to have Pastor Koss Schraub come up for the invocation, please. What a beautiful, beautiful day it is. Will you bow your heads with me for a moment of prayer, please? Our Heavenly Father, we have been instructed in the Bible to humble ourselves before you and to seek your face and pray. Today we need our sins forgiven and our land, the United States of America, to be healed. This land which you have so abundantly blessed us with. Our God, as Americans, we pray that our nation will never forget the personal sacrifices made by those who paid their supreme price for the liberty that we enjoy. Those in World War I, boys who left home, nearly 117,000 that never went home again. The men of World War II as well, some women. Over 405,000, some never accounted for. 
the nearly 37,000 who fought and died in Korea. Each of them has been very precious to you. We cannot forget, forget those who, whose lives in Vietnam, over 58,000 lost their lives for our freedom. The Gulf War, 383. Afghanistan and Iraq, over 58,000. Lord, may not one precious soldier, sailor, airman, Coast Guard, or Marine have sacrificed their life in vain for America. On this sacred day of memorial, remind all of us across this fruitful land that you're still in control. There on that hill of Calvary, your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, fought the battle between righteousness and unrighteousness. Thank you, Lord, for the victory that he made when the grave was empty and he rose from the dead. We ask your blessing on this memorial service in every way. And we'll give all the thanks to you and praise, for we pray these things in the lovely name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Amen. I'd now like to ask Jim Milnheiser to please come forward and do the Pledge of Allegiance for us. To lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you, Dave, and welcome. As we reaffirm our pledge to this wonderful country of ours, let's not forget the wonderful men and women who gave their lives so that we have the freedoms we have today. Please repeat after me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. We would now have the national anthem from the Ontario Chafee Community Band.
now we have This Is My Country from our band. I'd like to ask Gary Ovid to please uh, come up and give um, his uh, his presentation on the significance of Memorial Day. Thank you. Well, good morning. What an honor it is to be here today to address you on such a significant day. Memorial Day is a day that we honor those who gave of their lives in their sacrifice for you and I who are here today. So we appreciate that. We also, of course, appreciate the veterans who are here who fortunately came back, and we much appreciate that. <laughs> a couple of quick things, if I may. I do know there are three other electives that we want to make sure they get uh, acknowledged today. One of them is the Chafee High School, Chafee Joint Union High School District's uh, president of the board. Her name is Sue Ovid. The second one is the uh, president of the Cucamonga School Board, David Ortega. Over there, I saw David over there. And we don't want to forget water. We have Monta Vista Water District uh, Director, Mr. G. Michael Milheiser. Two of them are from, from the class of 65 at Chafee High School. Secondly, I wanted to mention uh, that the uh, friends of the Ontario Chafee Community Show Band, we have cards in the back that you may have already received. We would love for you to fill it out if you would and give us your, uh, your information so that we can contact you. Uh, we do uh, this, we do the Veterans Day as well. We provide the music and, and a lot of the, uh, <clears throat> the planning for it. And in addition, we have excellent concerts that we do once a month. And so uh, we would love to be able to get hold of you and let you know when they are. And uh, how many of you here have been to our concerts? A lot of you, but there are a lot of you who have not. You're missing out. So this is my Christmas gift to you, early. Please, we'd love to have you come. And finally, the most important reason that I'm here, of course, is to talk about the significance of this great day. 
the Memorial Day. We are gathered to remember those who died in our nation's service, Memorial Day, once known as Decoration Day. It was set aside in 1868 by General John Logan, the national commander of the Grand Army of the Republic. It's a day of remembrance. In the presence of many who have served, we say thank you for defending our way of life. Thank you for fighting tyranny and oppression in foreign lands so that we can enjoy the freedoms of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. The freedoms extended and guaranteed by the Bill of Rights. President Reagan said, freedom is one of the deepest and noblest aspirations of the human spirit. Memorial Weekend has long been a time of celebration and tradition. It is a time when families get together for a picnic or a barbecue. They uh, watch a game in, on uh, TV, maybe a double header as well. I hope you didn't watch the Angels yesterday. <laughs> and as well, they watch the Indianapolis 500 one uh, yesterday by something we all need more of, willpower. <laughs> it's a time to celebrate the traditions of this great country. It is a time made possible only through the sacrifices of our brave men and women who have served us so valiantly. As 20th and 21st century Americans, we have only experienced democracy and the rights and responsibilities inherent in this society. President Ford stated, our va values our principles and our determination to succeed as a free and democratic people will give us a torch to light the way. And we will survive and become the stronger, not only because of a patriotism that stands for love of country, but a patriotism that stands more importantly for love of people. That stems from our founding fathers that we are one nation under God, a God that is love and who inspires us to help others throw off oppression and to receive the freedoms that we have. So today, we are able to celebrate the men and women of courage who served in conflicts from the American Revolution in the late 1700s to the wars of the 20th century and finally to the present day conflicts in Afghanistan, Iraq, the Middle East and the global war on terrorism. Thank you for being the torch to light the way for others for your patriotism, for your sense of responsibility, for serving our country and serving our God. And for those who did not return, we offer the words of President Lincoln at the dedication of the cemetery in Gettysburg in 1863, that from these honored dead, we take increased devotion to that cause for which they gave the last full measure of devotion, that we here highly resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain. As stated by President Reagan in 1982, I have no illusions about what little I can now add to the silent testimony of those who gave their lives willingly for their country. Words are even more feeble on this Memorial Day, for the sight before us is that of a strong and good nation that stands in silence and remembers those who were loved and who in return love their countrymen enough to die for them, to give their lives for them. Further, the president says, yet we must try to honor them, not for their sakes alone, but for our own. And if words cannot repay the debt we owe these men, surely with our actions, we must try to keep faith with them and with the vision that led them to battle and to final sacrifice. Our first obligation to them and ourselves is plain enough. The United States and the freedom for which it stands, the freedom for which they died, must endure and prosper. Their lives remind us that freedom is not bought cheaply. It has a cost. It imposes a burden. And just as they whom we commemorate were willing to sacrifice, so too must we, in a less final, less heroic way, be willing to give of ourselves. To the over 1.3 million troops who have perished in combat in this young nation's history, we are eternally grateful. In a recent article in the Inland Valley Daily Bulletin, some of still read it, written by Chris Hare, I read that during the Korean conflict in the fall of 1950, U.S. military documents show some 3,000 American soldiers went to secure a key road in the heart of North Korea 
and then head towards the Chinese border. Instead, they marched into an ambush, a massacre. Those who died were unceremoniously thrown into shallow graves. Some 33,652 Americans died in battle during the Korean War, not in that particular one, only fewer than 3,000 in that one. But of those, 7,704 remain unaccounted for. But in Long Beach this month, one soldier, Corporal Albert Quintero, returned home. His soul can finally rest at his niece, Alice Arvizo. He's back with us. And they are continuing that effort to find and identify others who have been killed in action and who have not ever been identified and brought back home. More than 82,000 Americans from every conflict since World War II remain missing or unidentified. About half of those are likely lost forever, dwelling deep underwater. Still, there are 21,000 troops unidentified in Europe, 1,600 in Vietnam, and even 260 who died aboard the USS Oklahoma during the attack on Pearl Harbor. Denise Colnott, a mother, states, my son Kyle gave his life in Baghdad. He did not lose it. This is a poignant and important statement to reflect upon. Fortunately, many others make the same commitment. They give of their lives. They don't lose them. On our behalf, they serve our nation. I think of Pat Tillman, the star defensive back for the Arizona Cardinals professional football team, who left his million dollar job to join the army and be a torch to light the way for the people of Afghanistan and to make possible democracy and freedom to the oppressed. This is a day for us here in Ontario to say thank you and to express our gratitude to you who are here and those who have not returned. Thank you to the veterans assembled here and to your families. And for the families whose loved ones served but did not return, we say thank you. We owe you much, and we will pray for God's peace and grace for you continually. As I conclude, let me lead you, leave you with another quote from President Reagan. Let me say that nothing made me prouder as president than America's young people in uniform. And no decision was ever more difficult for me to make than the times I ordered our military forces into action. Each time I issued an order, I reminded myself that it wasn't just a nameless, faceless soldier I was dispatching, but a child of loving parents, the partner of an adoring spouse, or perhaps the parent and provider for some happy children. I reminded myself that if things should go wrong and casualties did occur, it wouldn't be just a day of flag-draped coffins coming home. There would permanently be empty chairs at family tables, vacant seats and little league bleachers, and teary-eyed explanations to young children about why their daddy wouldn't be coming home again. So I felt then, as I feel now, America owes a special thanks to those who are willing to make the ultimate sacrifice for their country. We must honor them and respect them, not just when they are in battle, but every day they wear the proud uniform of our country. Thank you, and may God bless you in our country. Uh, just before we have our next uh, <coughs> band piece, I want to just remind uh, the, all of the of groups of the seven service branches to please head to the back head to the back and get ready with Jesse down there so we can start our presentation of the seven branches right after the song. Also, I want to re remind our drone driver, Chris, we need to get the drone down before the flyover. So please, <laughs> I, was, I was advised about that and I, I don't want to get any trouble with Sylvia here. So, <laughs> so please get the drone down and all of everybody else go towards the, the back. And now we have uh, uh, our, our community band again with Stars and Stripes Forever.
and again. Now it's time, it's time for the presentation of the seven services branches, seven service branches. So we're going to start right now, U.S. Army, and away you go. Always 
United States Merchant Marines. in action. This is a silent presentation, please. Please come forward. Okay, thank you very much. We're going to go out of order a little bit. The next will be a, another uh, song from our band called Dawn. And then we're gonna go to the riderless horse presentation. So please have a seat and enjoy. Dawn, Dawn of the New Day, sorry.
Sylvia, if you're out there, I think the next event is the um, flyover. So are we ready for that after the amazing grace? Can I get the side shot from him? very much. Derek Williams is going to be giving a special award to uh, Sergeant Joseph Fialo, who's been doing this with us here at the cemetery for 28 years. I think the sergeant is coming up here now with Sylvia and the police chief.
After this award, we will have the Dove release. Congratulations, Joe. Uh, Joe's retiring after 30 plus years of service in July. And uh, those in the police force are very lucky if they can achieve, achieve three things. Uh, over 30 years of service, healthy and happy. And he's, he's getting that done uh, in a couple more months. <laughs> he's been a member of the Honor Guard uh, for the last 28 years representing not only the city, but the police department at events like this, posting colors and all kinds of ceremonial things. So Joe's grown on the team for 28 years, coming out here, dedicating himself. Um, you'll be missed, uh, but well deserved. But you could be like uh, Captain Retired Dexter Thomas, uh, Detective Diane Galindo, and uh, Sergeant Tim Glisson. They're all retired, but they're still part of the team. So Joe, that invitation is open to you to share your experience with us all. So thank you. Next, we're going to have the dove release right now. Over here to the east. Go, go, go. go. After that, we'll have uh, one final uh, song from the band. I really want to thank you all for coming out here very, very much. It's been a wonderful day and a beautiful weather and a great uh, Memorial Day remembrance. Okay, here we go, let the light shine.
Thank you all very much. Our Memorial Day Remembrance Program is now over, and we really, really thank you for being here. Thank you so much. The people who built our country and the people who built Ontario are like those people who are here today, the very best people anywhere. Learn more about the free community concerts by the Ontario Chafee Community Show Band at www.showband.net on the web. And learn more about the history of the trees at 126-year-old Bellevue Memorial Park. Just visit www.bellevuememorialpark.com. For the Ontario Chafee Community Show Band and Bellevue Memorial Park, this is Tim Greenwood speaking.